All the time. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate Jesus Christ on a gorgeous Sunday morning with no rain and no clouds in the sky. Except that little one I see up there, there's no rain in there, so that's pretty good. So welcome all, all of you, especially those who are visiting with us. We are, we are really glad you are here. A lot going on in the life of the church. We'll celebrate that during the joys and concerns. Uh, just two announcements I have real quickly. Uh, number one, Young at Heart uh, will be meeting this Wednesday morning at 11.30 down the hall. So if you're interested in being part of that program, uh, Wednesday morning at 11.30. Also, since the flowers weren't uh, listed in the, in the Bolton this, this week, uh, the 9 o'clock flowers were a memory of, of Kimberly Stanfield. And just to remind you, uh, Kimberly was killed by a drunk driver when she was 15 years old. And, and as I talked to the Stansfields, that was several years ago, uh, just a reminder of the seriousness of, of drinking and driving and how it can affect a lot of lives many, many years uh, ahead. Um, these flowers also are in celebration of, of our son Kelly Joyce's uh, birthday and our daughter Abby's graduation. So uh, with that, I think that's all the announcements I have this morning so far. I think we can start worshiping. We praise you, O God, for the Son of your love, for the Jesus who died and is now God above. Hallelujah, by the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, by the glory, revive us again. Revive us again. With your love, may our souls be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. Stand with us, please, as we celebrate the life that is in Christ. My life is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. And my hope is in you, Lord. In you, it's in you. My life is in you, Lord. And my strength is in you, Lord. And my hope is in you. My life, I'll praise you with. 
Amen. Give yourselves a round of applause. Well, you may be seated. Again, welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate Christ. There's a lot to celebrate. Uh, when I think of joy, I think of service. I think of a service in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and as I see all the ministries that are going on at fields, and there's an awful lot. Just look at the, at the calendar and look at the things going on. It's amazing uh, what God is doing in this community and in, in the lives of so many. There's a couple of things that I want to make mention of. There are 30 saints who are not here this weekend, and they are there. And we have 30 folk, 30 ladies on a, ret a spiritual retreat this, this weekend, and I understand they are just spiritualizing like never before. And they are, they are growing in faith, growing in spirit. I can't wait for them to get back into our midst and really celebrate all that God has been doing uh, in their heart throughout that weekend. So pray for those 30 who, who, are, who are on retreat here and pray for safe return. Also, uh, mission is a big part of the church. Uh, as you know, as I mentioned last week, there's 18 folks going on a mission trip down to West Virginia. And part of that is being funded by the rummage sale. Uh, with thank you for all who helped with the rummage sale and thank you for all those who brought treasures to the rummage sale. We made over $3,600 in the rummage sale, so that's, that's pretty good. Well, was, you know, it was neat. Um, yesterday, was it yesterday, Jennifer, that somebody just came in and paid it forward, gave $20 I have the card right here. and said, here's 10 people that can get $2 bags for free. Didn't buy so, so somebody just came in and paid 20 bucks. So 20 people could get... 10 people. 10, 10, 10 people could get free bags of stuff. Wow, God is good. You know, Jennifer, I've noticed something in the few years I've been in ministry. People don't so much care about the budget, but they care about uh, how we help folks outside these walls. And people will give to a mission. And I mean, it's one to tell people, you know, what the money is going for. But I think that they need to know that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because most of the funds that, that, that come into this church go outside. And the health... Uh, the least and the lost and those who are those who are struggling. And speaking of a wonderful ministry, I'd like to invite Rachel Dotson to, to come forward for a few minutes here. She's part of the Cornerstone Pregnancy Service. And as you see in the back, there's some baby bottles. And Rachel, come on. I was going to say, come on down. There's no come on down. But Good morning, everybody. As Pastor said, my name is Rachel, and I am here this morning representing Cornerstone Pregnancy Services. I'm the new Director of Development over there, and I just am so thankful to be here with you all this morning. So thank you for giving me this little bit of time. Um, Cornerstone, for those of you who might not know, is a ministry here in Lorain County. We're located over by Midway Mall, whose mission is to share the love of Christ and word and deed with anyone who's experiencing an unplanned pregnancy grief of fetal demise, or lifestyle distress situation. And we do this by offering a, a bunch of different services that are both free and confidential to our clients, from pregnancy testing and ultrasounds to uh, life education classes that teach them the skills that they need, in, like financial planning, infant care, child care, anything that uh, they need, we are there to provide for them. And we're also able to help them with any sort of like they need diapers, formula, wipes, anything like that. We're also able to help provide that for them in that kind of crisis situation. Um, the reason why I'm here this morning is because your church, uh, yet again, is doing our baby bottle blessings campaign, which is these little bottles that you can find in the back. Um, these bottles are so important to our ministry and um, 
making it function. Um, when we look at our ministry, we are supported primarily through individual support and church support like you guys. Um, these bottles bring in a lot of money that helps us fund our programs throughout the whole year. And so you guys doing this is such a blessing. We look at these little bottles and we think, oh, you know, it's just a little bottle, but it all adds up to help a lot of people. I often share with people the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. You know, he had a couple loaves and fishes, you know, and he was able to do that. So God can take the money that you guys fill up in these bottles and multiply that to touch the lives of so many people here in our county. So it's really important. The way it works, you just uh, pick up a bottle on your way out. Uh, your campaign's going to run from Mother's Day to Father's Day. So you take it. You fill it up with random money if you want to put change in. Some people just put a check in, cash, whatever you want, and then you'll bring it back by Father's Day, and then uh, they'll get it back to me over at the center. We add it up. We'll let you know the total that your church raises, and then that money goes directly into our services of just helping these women and, and even the men in these crisis situations. So if you have any questions, I'm going to be hanging around in the back by where the bottles are at after service. I'd love to talk with you and uh, answer any questions you might have. And Thanks again for having me. Well, thank you, Rachel. And Rachel, is it okay if they take more than one bottle? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. I didn't want to make anybody feel like they could only bring one bottle. Um, it is a joy to serve. It is a joy to be in the Lord's house celebrating the gifts of the Spirit that, that, we've, that have enlivened our lives and the lives of others. So we gather here with joy uh, and celebration. And also prayer, because a lot of folks need prayer in our community, uh, within this church, and we need to lift those up in prayer. If you would uh, take a look at the prayer list, there's quite a few. I have a few more I'd like to add. If you would please pray for Dennis and Pat. Uh, Dennis is struggling with cancer, and Pat is struggling with an upcoming uh, pretty serious surgery. Uh, prayers for uh, families in distress. And, and families who have great challenges. Also, if you would please pray for Ann Hemi, the Greenheiser family, and the Hess family. Are there any other concerns or joys of the church here this morning? All right. Well, that's good. Well, I, again, I'll, I'll, I'll do a celebration. Son Kelly is with us here this morning, celebrated his birthday yesterday. And as I said last, last week, Abby has, is now officially graduated. She's a graduate, and we've been going to graduate school. Uh, so welcome, and thank you, and congratulations, and everything else to go along with that. Well, let us go to God in silent prayer. Gracious God, as we gather in your house here this morning, we give you thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Lord, for the blessings of our day, the, the joy of new beginnings, the joy of, of the gifts that you've given us uh, that we may be able to go beyond these walls to do your work. Lord God, thank you for the privilege of serving you. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of, of you being our God. Thank you for the privilege, Lord, of, of serving you. Um, and, Lord God, what a joy that is. Thank you, Lord, for family. Thank you, Lord, for friends. Thank you, Lord, for new beginnings. Thank you, Lord, for being with us during times of challenge, during times of joy. Thank you, Lord God, for, for looking at us, especially those times that we say dumb things and do dumb things, and, and you still love us. In fact, what you'll do is you clean us up, and you redeem us, you forgive us, and set us free, Lord God. And thank you for the gift of another opportunity to serve. Lord, as we gather in your house here this day, we, we give you thanks for so much. In the midst of our thanksgiving, there are many we need to lift up in prayer. For all is not well uh, in your world, and we just pray uh, for those areas of our world that are besieged by violence and and devastation of human origin, Lord God, we pray for your peace to intercede in those places. Lord God, for, for our great nation, we pray also for all those that have had uh, pretty major things happen as due to the severe weather. We just pray your watch care upon all those so affected 
Lord God, we, we pray for our, our national leaders. We pray for our state leaders. We pray, Lord, for our civic leaders, our first responders, our medical community. Uh, Lord God, we pray for all those who are, who are tirelessly serving the needs of others. Lord God, we pray for those that are mourning the loss of loved ones. And this morning we pray for the, the Greenheiser family and the Hess family and the family and friends of Richard Griffith. Lord God, in the midst of their challenges and their grief, may there, may there be joy and hope of everlasting life. Lord God, we pray for all those that surround their loved ones seven days a week, 24 hours a day with love and care. Give them strength. Give them hope. Um, give them wisdom. Uh, as, they, as they do what, what you have called them to do for the ones they love. Lord God, we, we left up to you today, Dennis and Pat and Addison, Zach and Sam, Betty and Paul, for Julian, for those in school, for Heather and her baby, for Anna, for Diane, for Joanne, for Ron, for Judy, for Annette, for Jackie, Savannah, Dawn and Guy, for Ann and Chelsea, for June and Calvin, for Carson, the Brown family, for Megan, for Bruni, for Joyce, for all those others, Lord God, we've lifted up to you by voice and deep within our souls. Lord God, we, we pray your Holy Spirit rest upon each and every one that they may know your presence in their lives, that they may feel your healing presence in both body and in soul. And now, Lord God, we pray for each other and for ourselves that we may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit to continue the good work that you have begun in each and every one of us. Lord God, bless and sanctify those gifts that we will be laying before you. Multiply them uh, to your ministry. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now offer our tithes and our offerings.
now hear the first reading for the day, which comes from 1 Peter chapter 2. And Peter instructs us how to suffer. For it is commendable if a man bears up under pain of unjust suffering because he is conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins on his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed for you were like sheep going astray but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. So hear the word of the Lord. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for a children's chat. Good morning. Boy, you guys have your babies here this morning. Well, good morning, everybody. You feel good? You feel really good? You really, really feel good? You know why? It is communion. That is true. Uh, but there's something else here that's really special. In the Bible today, in the Bible verse, and I'll be, I'll be reading to the folks here this morning, Jesus says, I give life in abundance abundance and I think of abundance as a big pile more than you could ever imagine that God gives you all this stuff more than you could you could ever even play with if there are toys more tools than you could ever use to build a house I can't think of it either Austin because it's just too big it's too it's too special and when God says I'm going to give an abundance that means that that God is going to give us so much we can't even we can't even think about it and we don't even know. You know what I think? I think when I look at all of you, you know what I see? I I see God's abundance in all of you, and I see God's abundance in everybody I see out there. Neron, you're not a big pile, Austin. But 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 what but what you are is 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 blessed by God with all kinds of special gifts, all kinds of gifts to to help to help. Yeah, you're all special, really, really special, and and God has given you gifts to help other people out. God has given you gifts to to maybe be good in school, or maybe to help somebody else who needs help, or or just to give somebody a a, a kind hello or a smile or something like that. That's what abundance is. And I was talking a little bit about all the mission stuff that we do here, all the stuff we do to help other people. You know, that's because that all the people here at this church have been given so much, so many gifts to use for, for God's help. That's what abundance is to me. Yeah, it's a big pile of stuff, but it's a big pile of good stuff. It's a, good, it's a big pile of stuff that God gives us to use uh, to help other people out. I think I'm going to pray now. Well, that's true. Lord Jesus, thank you for blessing us uh, in abundance with so many things, with just piles and piles of gifts. Bless us and keep us always in all the, all the blessings and gifts you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for coming up here this morning. First time around this morning, I was talking about gifts, and the kids thought I was going to give them something. And I said, oh, I didn't make very many friends. That's my first 
the first service. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for the abundance we have received. Thank you, Lord, for the abundance of your anointing of your Holy Spirit. That as the scripture is read and proclaimed, that we may come to know the abundance of grace, the abundance of hope that will soothe our souls. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord, for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. Amen. Gospel lesson is from John's Gospel, the 10th chapter. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and abandoned. Anyone who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. This is a verse I love. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This has been a fun week for me. For many, every week is fun. But this, is, this was really a fun week because I was sitting in my office doing some work here the first part of the week, and actually a little, bit, a little bit last week, and I kept seeing these cars going by, filled with all the stuff for the rummage sale. And then every once in a while, pick em up trucks would come by, all filled with stuff, and drop them off at the rummage sale. And I'd see the stack of stuff just growing and growing and growing and growing. Thank you, Jesus, for Betty and all those others who, who went through all that stuff and, 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 and priced it. But we just, there's an incredible amount of stuff. Aside from those who cleared out homes, and there are a few of those, most of us donated a lot of stuff, and we went home and didn't miss a bit. It's an amazing phenomenon, rummage sales. It's an amazing phenomenon, stuff. Because as we start filling up our houses, our garage, when all those spaces are taken up, we start considering buying a new shed. And when that shed is filled, then we say, we better rent some space. You know those places right by the interstates. Let's put all our stuff in that shed, for God knows when we're going to use that stuff. We probably never will, but you never know, so it's there. And so we keep accumulating all this stuff. And it's enjoyable for the most part. And sometimes we look at the things that we have, and we judge our quality of life based on material abundance, or maybe other things like more vacation time or just good health as a passport to this living the good life. Which brings us to the church. Sometimes we take a look at the church and folks might say, outside her, who are trying to look in or trying to understand the church are saying, well, what can the church do for me? What, can, what abundance can the church come out of the class? Because he was reading the Bible. The reason that was given because that Bible represents all that is racist, all that is sexist, all that is misogynist. Isn't that a shame? When actually it represents the exact opposite. It represents the freedom from all of that oppression and all of that stuff. And for some reason, people look at it, uh, our, our faith as something that takes away, but it gives in abundance, abundance of living. 
God wants us to celebrate our lives. God wants us to take what has been given to us in abundance, multiply it, and share it. I think God loves us too much to do otherwise. I heard a great message yesterday morning that I like to steal a part of and share with you if I could. Can't remember the name of the book, but it, it had something to do with uh, seeking warmer sun in search of, a war, of warmer suns. And what it was saying was, basically, is um, to go out of your comfort zone a little bit. Go and seek new horizons. Go, go in different places. And, they, and they, he used a, an analogy of a plant, and a house plant. And you have this little plant that you put in a pot. And you put the plant in the pot. What happens over time? The root structure starts getting bigger. Right? So what do you have to do? You have to get a bigger pot. And then, so you get a bigger pot. I uh, had to be careful with that because I was starting to think in my mind, had to get more pot, and it's not, that's not right. Um, you, had to, you had to put this, the, the plant in a bigger pot and allow that root structure to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And as that root structure gets bigger, it needs to expand its horizons just a little bit. And see, that root structure is actually all the blessings that God is giving us in abundance to, to serve the Lord, to go out beyond uh, the confines of, of our, our current environment. In other words, to go out and see what God has, has enlivened uh, around us, to see what God's blessings are. And so think of, see, think of that root structure of that plant that, that keeps growing and expanding and just wants to go out. That's what God has given us. God has given us in abundance the gifts to be able to go beyond ourselves, beyond our silos, be, beyond even our comfort zone and perhaps especially our comfort zone. And, and to really serve God, uh, to really experience God, to really understand the blessings that God has given to us. It's interesting, when we take a look at this word that, that has become flesh and dwelled among us, what the change uh, that, that can occur in our lives, and all we have to do is accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. All we have to do is, is, is accept this in amazing, incredible abundance of God's grace. This Bible is not about rules. You've heard that from this pulpit many times. This, this Bible is not about rules. The amazing thing about God's grace is that it is offered without price. The amazing thing about God's grace or God's undeserved love towards us is no matter who we are, no matter how much we have messed up, no matter how many dumb things we have said, no matter how many ridiculous things we have done, God still loves us. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? I mean, God still loves us no matter who we are because God still wants us to be the people that God has created us to be and will go to the ends of the earth, including death on the cross, that we may accomplish that. That's God's abounding, abundant grace that is alive and well. There's something else about our God that's kind of interesting. That God loves those who hate God. How often is it that we actually love people who might hate us? Pretty tough to do, isn't it? God says, I still love you. I'm still here for you. I want to offer you this abundance of life. I'm here. All you have to do is turn around and accept this. Abundant life is a celebration of God. The celebration and, and, and the spiritual party that ensues, 
that transform our lives, that sets us free, makes us have truly a whole lot of fun. Whether we have a lot of stuff or no stuff, whether we have one shed or ten, whether we live in wealth or in poverty, struggling with health or caring for a loved one who is struggling, abundant life is the celebration of God in our midst always, no matter where our journey takes us. That is the joy, saints, of our faith. It's not giddy, jump, jump up and down all the time. It's serious. It's raw. It's in our midst during joy and during challenge. God is with us no matter where our journey leads us. Even to the end of the age. Our task is sometimes a little bit on the difficult side. But saints, it's all about trusting God. It's all about knowing that God is there. We may not sense it, but God is always there. Have you ever felt like God abandoned you? Have you ever felt the, the absence of God or the perceived absence of God in your life? That when all the stuff hits the fan, you put your hands up and say, God, where are you? That happens. Job felt the same way. Remember Job, wealthiest man on the face of the earth. Had tens of thousands of cattle. All these horses. All these children. Don't know how he could be that wealthy with all those children, but he had all those children. He had everything until life took it away. And Job said this, if I go forward, he is not there. Or backward, I cannot perceive him. On the left, he hides, and I cannot behold him. I turn to the right but cannot see him. But listen to this. But he knows the way that I take. Despite Job's doubts and his inability to perceive God's presence, it is his trust that he had in his God that God is there especially in those times. Because there may be times in our life that we are blinded by, from God's presence, even though it is there in abundance. We are frustrated by life's twists and turns, consumed by day-to-day -day cha challenges. But God is still offering grace in abundance. We may even turn to God in despair and ask, why God, why have you done such a thing? And saints, God is especially there in abundance. This is what celebration is all about. This is what joy is all about. This is what this thing called faith is all about. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that's when we begin to live life. Now, I was challenged oftentimes. And your, your sermons, Tom, are okay. Not great. Not bad. Well, there's one thing you're forgetting to tell us. How do you do it? You know, how do you live this life of grace? How do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? How do you move forward even though times are tough? Well, here's the how-to. Just thank Jesus. All the time. Thanksgiving is the purest form of faith, the purest form of devotion. 
giving thanks to God just enlivens our souls. Because the more we give thanks, the more we feel God's presence. In good times, thank you, Jesus. In bad times, thank you, Jesus. You've heard this many times because I can't stop saying it. Thank you, Jesus, for the gifts of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for being there when life is so crappy. Thank you, Jesus, for being there for me, for my family, for my community, for my nation, for my world. Thank you, Jesus. You want to know how to get closer to God? Thank Jesus. And God is there. And we will see God. And God will set us free. And we will know the abundance that God offers to us. And all we have to do is thank God for the blessings of our day. Thank God for the privilege of being God's child. Thank God for the privilege of, of being redeemed and called God's own. To thank Jesus for that every moment from the time we rise to the time we fall asleep. It is to thank Jesus for the abundance of God's grace. So saints, Celebrate God by your thanksgiving every moment. Thank Jesus with every breath. Praise God every moment. And you will know life. And life in abundance. Let the people of God say, Amen. I'd like to ask the ushers who will be serving this morning to start coming forward at this time. And as they come forward, I'd like to offer an invitation to everyone. This table is not the table of Fields United Methodist Church or the United Methodist Church. This is the table of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and all are welcome to this place. All who seek a closer relationship with God, and with each other. So we, we come here humbly, acknowledging who we are, and most importantly, whose we are. So let us pray together a prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for all of us and for all of creation, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he was sitting with his disciples in that upper room, and he took a loaf of bread, gave thanks to you, blessed it and broke it, and said, This is my body which is broken for you, take and eat. When the supper had ended, he took a cup of wine, again giving thanks to you, blessed it and said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink. 
And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As I... I will first uh, serve those who are serving in common union, then all are welcome to this table. the body and blood of Christ. This is the body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. This is the body All are welcome to the Lord's table.
Jesus, thank you for this gift of everlasting life. Thank you for this gift of your body and of your blood. Thank you, Lord, for redeeming us, for setting us free. Bless us by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. Anoint our lives that as we go from this place that we may serve you and offer peace to the world around us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand as we close out this morning's service by singing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Tom, you want to join? Father, we thank you for giving us 
arms so wide, so strong, so close for us to lean on, to hold on, to depend on. Give us the strength to realize that we cannot, nor should we need to do this alone, that you are forever with us. Wherever we go, may your cross and the cross of Calvary be the backdrop and the canvas with which we live and speak and simply be. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week, everybody.